types of power supply one is snps switch board power supply and another is ups uninterruptible power supply okay so first we start with the first topic switch mode power supply in short we call as a snps so what is snps so generally there are two types of power supply available generally we apply in the electrical and electronic circuit one is linear power supply and switch board power supply so first we understand the what is the difference between linear power supply and switch mode power supply as you know that in the all the electronic circuits or electrical you know, we provide the some power supplies okay that may be a dc power supply or maybe a ac power supply here yeah. so here we first understand the difference between linear power supply and switch mode power supply so both this supply provide the dc power to the electrical and electronic circuits but the similarity is what here as well similarity is and here the difference is that the crucial factor differentiate between linear power supply and snps is the working procedure of both the power supply in the procedure operating procedure of linear power supply we first convert the high voltage ac into low voltage ac by using a transformer and then it convert into dc by using the rectifier while in the switch mode power supply snps we first convert ac to dc by using the rectifier and then we transform that dc voltage into desired voltage by using the voltage regulator so this is the main difference between linear power supply and switch mode power supply and then after we will see that which one is advantages as compared to others clear yeah. so difference is that you can see in this we will see in the next slide that single line diagram of the linear power supply we first step down by using the transformer normal transformer 50 hertz transformer so overall size of the linear power supply is large as compared to the switch mode power supply because in the switch mode power supply we first convert ac to dc by using rectifier and then after we again convert this dc into high frequency ac by using the inverter and then after this high frequency ac again converted to dc by using the rectifier so in this case snps we require the high frequency transformer so overall size of the transformer is less in snps so overall your snps power supply becomes compact in size with less weight so generally in the particular application where we require the small size power supply with less weight in that case we go for this switch mode power supply so generally in the most of the electronic circuits like you can see that in mobile charger in dc motor in a personal computer or laptop the dc power supply that is provided by using the snps so in the laptop your charger that is also contains the snps in your personal pc cpu also there is a snps because we require the compact size of dc supply if you use a linear power supply in that case the size of the transformer is large so you require the large space as well as weight of the power supply becomes large so because of this bulky nature of the linear power supply generally prefer the switch mode power supply in most of the electronic circuits okay yeah. so the history of the switch mode power supply is that it was first developed by the nasa in 1960 for the space vehicle so as you know that in the space vehicle they require the compact size with less weight so the engineer of this nasa was designed this type of power supply and after that it becomes very popular and then after in most of the electronic circuit nowadays we use this type of the power supply yeah so another significant factor that creates the difference between this linear power supply and snps that is size as we discussed that we will discuss in detail the how the size of snps is less as compared to the linear power supply the linear power supply is bulky while the snps is light in weight this makes the snps portable and can be easily used anywhere while the linear power supply can be used only for the laboratory purpose for the big electrical and electronic circuits for the small electronic circuits or electrical circuit you go for this snps because this is less weight less bulky in nature okay. so now let's understand the single line diagram of the linear power supply and then snps and then after we conclude that which one is better 
so first this is the single line diagram of linear power supply so definition of linear power supply or function of linear power supply is just to supply the power to the any circuit it may be electrical or it may be electronic circuits so there are two type of the power supply like ac power supply or dc power supply here in this chapter we discuss only the dc power supply so smps in the market are available which provide the ac as well as dc but here in this chapter we discuss the which mostly use power supply that is dc power supply so in this chapter we discuss the dc smps which provide the dc power to the load so the linear power supply is supplying the power to the circuit which is used in electrical electronic circuits and consist of the step down transformer rectifier filter circuit and voltage regulator you can see in the circuit diagram this single line diagram here there is a input voltage assume that this is a 230 volt 50 volt ac so this 230 volt 50 volt ac is was converted into a low voltage ac by using this transformer step down transformer and then after this step down ac voltage is converted to dc by using the rectifier and then after the output of the rectifier we know that it is not a pure dc so to convert into constant dc and get the smooth dc voltage we require the filter circuit or smoothing circuit so at the output side of the rectifier we connect the filter which is nothing but a combination of inductor and capacitor passive filter so that passive filter remove the higher order harmonics from this output voltage of the rectifier and then after the output of this filter is applied to the linear regulator because at the load side we require the constant dc at the output side here rectifier we want get the constant dc because your input voltage may change or depending upon the load conditions or your voltage is varying so if you require the constant dc voltage at the load side you provide the linear regulator Yeah, so this is the single line diagram of the linear power supply. So what happens actually in this case? Why the size of the transformer is large here? Because here we use the normal as uh, iron core transformer, which is operated at 50 years or 60 years. Yeah. So the size of this type of transformer is large as compared to the transformer which we use for the high frequency operation. For high frequency operation, generally we prefer to use the ferrite core type of the transformer. there is a material one type one type of material like iron core there is a ferrite material so in the ferrite material you require the small size of the transformer which are operated very high frequency so overall size of the power supply becomes less in case of smps because in smps we convert the high frequency ac into dc so in that case the size of the transformer is less so because of this nature of the circuit diagram of the linear power supply it is bulky in nature now let's understand the single line diagram of the smps so you can see that main supply same like a linear power supply is assume it is a 230 volt ac 50 years so it is first rectified here you can see in the linear power supply we first step down using transformer but here in this smps first we convert ac to dc by using a rectifier filter out convert to dc here and then apply to the inverter chopper so why this the name is given here inverter chopper because here the switch in the inverter which is operated at a very high frequency like of in 1000 hertz 40 1000 hertz or 40 kilohertz to 200 kilohertz depending upon the semiconductor switch we use okay as you know that there are a different semiconductor switch operated at different frequency like power bus pin power bjt so all the switch has a limitation to operate at particular frequency as you know that power mosfet is operated at the highest switching frequency so if you require the highest frequency highest switching frequency in terms of 100 or 1000 kilohertz then you go for the power mosfet so depending upon the switch we use in the inverter circuit we select the frequency operating frequency or depending upon the frequency you can select the switch in the inverter that depend upon your application So now in this inverter we operate the switch at very high frequency it means we chop the dc voltage at very high frequency so that's why it is called as the inverter chopper it generally performs the operation sir, like sir. yes sir our input is 230 vp then how we convert a vp to 1000 sorry 
સર 50 હર્ટ્ઝ નું ઇનપુટ આપીએ તો પછી ઇનપુટ રેક્ટિફાયર માં આઉટપુટ માં 1000 હર્ટ્ઝ કેમ મળે સી ઇનપુટ ઇઝ 50 હર્ટ્ઝ ઓકે ધેન આઉટપુટ ઇઝ વોટ ડીસી હિયર રેક્ટિફાયર આઉટપુટ ઇઝ ડીસી ધેટ ઇઝ અ ઝીરો ફ્રીક્વન્સી ડીસી હેઝ નો એની ફ્રીક્વન્સી સર તમે કીધું ને કે ઇન્વર્ટર ની ફ્રીક્વન્સી હાઈ લેવલ નું આઈ એમ ટોકિંગ અબાઉટ ઇન્વર્ટર સી આઈ એમ ટોકિંગ અબાઉટ ધ ધીસ રેક્ટિફાયર રેક્ટિફાયર આઉટપુટ ઇઝ વોટ ડીસી ધેટ ફ્રીક્વન્સી ઇઝ ઝીરો ધેન ધીસ ડીસી ઇઝ એપ્લાઈડ ટુ ઇન્વર્ટર વિચ ઇઝ ઓપરેટેડ બાય ધ હાઈ ફ્રીક્વન્સી હમ મે બી 100 હર્ટ્ઝ 100 કિલોહર્ટઝ મે બી 200 કિલોહર્ટઝ સો આઉટપુટ ઓફ ધીસ ઇન્વર્ટર ઇઝ વોટ હાઈ ફ્રીક્વન્સી એસી સપોઝ ધેટ વી કોઓપરેટ ધીસ ઇન્વર્ટર સ્વિચ એટ 100 કિલોહર્ટઝ so output of this inverter is what ac but it is 100 kilohertz ac because we operate the switch of the inverter at very high frequency on off on off clear yeah. as you can see that the normal inverter we turn on the switch at every half cycle if you see the square wave type of the inverter single phase simple inverter as you know that we turn on the one switch in first half first 10 millisecond if you require the 50 hertz output then we turn on the second switch after the 10 millisecond you yeah, so you get the output in 20 millisecond one cycle you get in 20 millisecond clear yeah. but here you operate this inverter switch at a very high frequency like 100 kilohertz so 1 divided by 100 kilohertz that is the duration of completion of one cycle clear yeah. so inverter switch is operated very high frequency so this convert this dc voltage it's coming from this rectifier into high frequency ac at this side in output side of the inverter clear my point yes sir okay. now this high frequency ac output of this inverter we provide to the transformer now your transformer must be operated at this frequency because nowadays we not use this normal transformer because the frequency of this ac is in terms of kilohertz so you cannot use the crg or normal iron core type of transformers you require the special type of the transformer which we call as a ferrite core type of the transformer because in that type of the transformer we use the ferrite material as a core material yeah, because ferrite core is provide the less amount of the hysteresis and eddy current losses at a highest frequency clear and the size of this ferrite core transformer is less as compared to this normal transformers so high frequency application we use the ferrite core transformer here in this case where in the linear power supply here we use the normal transformer that is the main difference between linear power supply and your smps so here in this case your transformer size is less as compared to the size of transformer here in the linear power supply because the linear power supply your transformer is operated just 50 years 50 years or 60 years whatever your supply clear so here in this case of smps your transformer is operated in 1000 kilohertz or 100 kilohertz clear so because of this reason as the frequency is increases the size of the ferrite core transformer is decreases because of the property of this ferrite core material as you increase the frequency of the supply the size required for the transformer core is decreases so because of this reason the overall size of the smps becomes less and becomes less weighty or less bulky in nature okay. so the output of this inverter high frequency ac we step up or step down by using this transformer so the purpose of the transformer is just for the providing the isolation between load and power supply So suppose any four type pass is the main power supply so if you provide the transformer the, there are the less possibility of transfer of this pole to this load side so the purpose of the transformer is step up or step down as well as to provide the isolation between load and power supply so this high frequency output of this transformer is that is applied again to the rectifier because here again we require the dc power supply our load is dc so this high frequency ac is converted into dc now what is the difference between this rectifier output dc and dc provided by this rectifier in the linear power supply what is the difference can anyone give the answer what is the difference the rectifier output voltage of this rectifier in the linear power supply and what is the output of this rectifier dc voltage 
is there a difference between both the output of this rectifier yes anyone here you apply this rectifier the input voltage is ac but it is operated at very high frequency now in the linear power supply you provide the ac but it is operated at very low frequency 50 hertz or 60 hertz clear so here you get the output dc voltage at the rectifier in the linear power supply that gives the dc but not a pure dc it's a ripple to ac that output dc contains the ripple zone okay ripple contain the output dc and the ripple frequency of the dc is what two times supply frequency suppose 50 hertz frequency so ripple frequency of the dc is 100 hertz where here in this case output of this rectifier the ripple frequency is very high your supply frequency is already very high clear so what will happen the output dc in this case of the rectifier contains a very high ripple frequency so this ripple can be filtered out easily with the small size of the filter because filter is basically what inductor and capacitor as a filter as you know that inductor and capacitor value is inversely proportional to frequency so as the frequency of the ripple ripples in dc output voltage is high you require the small size of the filter yeah let's understand here by like for here you can understand it very well hello you can see this black board dikha raha hai na sir blue one minute ओके बताया देखा ही शब्द
passive filter it is a combination of inductor and capacitor we used as a filter circuit so as you know the equation of xl 2 pi f into n okay n is equal to what xl divided by 2 pi f it means what your inductor is inversely proportional to frequency same way the xc is what 1 of what 2 pi fc so c is equal to what 1 of what 2 pi f into xc so again it is inversely proportional to frequency so inductor and capacitor of this filter is inversely proportional to frequency so as the frequency of the input ripple is less you require this large size of this lnc and as the frequency of this ripple dc voltage is increases then you require the small size of the lnc or overall size of the filter is become less so due to this reason when you design the filter for linear power supply because of the ripple frequency of the rectifier output voltage is less it is just a 100 hertz you require the large size of the filter because large value of inductor and capacitor so physical size of the filter is becomes large as well as size of the transformer is large so overall linear power supply becomes very bulky in nature physical size becomes very large so generally in the electronic circuit you know that we require the compact size of the dc power supply like in your cpu so your cpu is just like a box okay in that box you require the number of component as well as this type of dc power supply so if you use the linear power supply in in your cpu that the size of the cpu becomes very large okay so this is not a way to provide the dc power supply where you require the compact size so because of this reason in general in all the electronic circuit where you require the compact size we generally prefer the smps now what will happen in the smps Yes, sir. All of you understand this one. Linear power supply. Why it is bulky in nature? Why the filter size is high? All of you clear? Is there a doubt? All of you? Yes or no? Yes. Clear all of you? Yes, sir. Okay. So let's understand the working of SMP. So in the SMPs, what we do first convert this AC into DC by using the rectifier. If you see the block diagram, so in the block diagram, we first convert this 230 volt AC 50 volts to the rectifier. Are you assuming that this is direct to the rectifier? So this rectifier provides the DC, and this DC is applied to the inverter chopper. Inverter, which is operated at 100 kilohertz to 1000 kilohertz. So what is the frequency of output AC? This convert DC into that much of frequency AC. Suppose as it is 100 kilohertz. We operate the inverter switch on off on off. So here you get the 100 kilohertz AC, and then after this high frequency AC applied to the transformer, and this is a special type of transformer which we call as a ferrite core transformer. And the size of the ferrite core transformer becomes increases as the Frequency of the AC supply becomes large. Clear? This is the property of the filter. So here you can see that overall size of the transformer is less. As well as here you can see that again this AC, high frequency AC, is converted into DC. Clear? By using the again rectifier. Now, what is the output of this rectifier? The ripple frequency of this output voltage of the rectifier is what? At a very high frequency. Very, very high frequency. Like suppose this is the supply frequency 50 hertz. Clear? Now, in the comparison of that, if we draw the output voltage of normal rectifier. 
Suppose this is a 50 yard AC. Here. And assume that we have converted this into 100 kilowatts AC and then after 100 kilowatts convert into DC. So as compared to the single cycle of 50 yards AC, you get the how many cycles? How many cycles in this one cycle of AC? 100 kilowatts times. Here. So very large number of times it come off, come off, come off. Large number of times. You cannot do it here itself. Clear. So because of this reason, you can see that ripple magnitude is decreases in this case as well as ripple frequency of the DC voltage is increases. So as you know that frequency inductor and capacitor frequency inversely proportional means that size of the inductor and capacitor is reduces as the frequency of the ripple increases. So you require the filter and the output of the safety fire which is basically LNC. So size of LNC becomes small or you can say that it becomes very compact. So weight of the filter is reduces as well as transformer weight is reduces. So overall size of the SMPS becomes less. So you can use this DC power supply in a compact size for particular electronic circuits. Understand all of you? What is the difference between linear power supply and switch board power supply? Clear all of you this one? Is there a doubt? Yes, anyone? Is there a doubt? No, sir. Okay. okay. So let's understand again in detail. So you can see that here this is the rectifier in the SMPS converted to DC, and this DC is converted into high frequency AC by using this inverter. And then after this high frequency AC step up or step down by using this fat core transformer. And then this high frequency AC is applied to this rectifier. So the rectifier output is high frequency ripple DC voltage. Frequency of the DC is zero, but the frequency of the ripple you get at the output of the rectifier, that frequency is very high. So that DC you can be easily filtered out by the small size of LNC filter. And then after the output of the filter is applied to this, your DC output or load. Now you can see that this is a closed loop system. So based on the requirement of the DC output voltage at the load side, the control circuit we use in the inverter provide the control voltage. And based on that, the firing angle and the firing time of the switch is decided. You can see that here based on the requirement of the output voltage, the chopper control get the feedback from the output side. And based on that, the inverter switches become on and off as per the required output voltage. Okay. So one by one all this component function is given here below. So first component that is a rectifier. So as we know that converts first AC to DC and this rectifier produces the unregulated DC output voltage and then after it passed through the filter and then after it applied to the inverter. Second component is the inverter chopper. As you know that this is convert this DC to high frequency AC. Then output transformer, this is a special type of transformer called as a ferret core transformer provide the isolation. Fourth component is the output rectifier. Again, convert this high frequency AC into DC, which contains a high frequency ripple DC, and thereafter provide the regulation. So this regulation is provided by this feedback control system. You can see. Here. So these are the five different blocks of SMPS. So let's briefly discuss the comparison between linear power supply and switch mode power supply. So first, as per the definition of the linear power supply is that it completes the stepping down of the AC voltage first and then it converts into the AC as per the definition of linear power supply. When the SMPS is first convert AC to DC and then after the step up or step down to the desired level. Efficiency of the linear power supply is just 20 to 25 percent only, where the efficiency of the SMPS is 60 to 65 percent. Because the size of the filter required in the linear power supply is bulky in nature, so the losses happens in the linear power supply is very large. When the 
SMPS, the size of the filter is less, as well as size of the transformer is less, so overall loss are less. So they provide the efficiency 60 to 65 percent. It means that suppose you provide the 100 volt, 100 volt power, then output side you get the 60 or 65 volt. Where in the case of linear power supply, you just get the 20 or 25 volt. Voltage regulation is done by the voltage regulator. You can see in the linear power supply single line diagram. You require the linear voltage regulator at the output side. But in the case of SMBS, you don't require the special voltage regulator circuit because by using the feedback control system that regulate the voltage at the load side. So that is another difference. Voltage regulator is done by the feedback circuit in the SMBS. The magnetic material used in the linear power supply for the transformer that is Stoli or CRGO core. In the SMPS transformer, we use the ferrite core material. And because of this reason, the linear power supply becomes bulky in nature, where SMPS becomes less bulky in comparison to the linear power supply. Complexity is less in the linear power supply as compared to the SMPS, where SMPS becomes more complex because in which we use the inverter, which is operated at very high frequency. So the control circuit we use in the linear power supply, so in the SMPS, this controller, it becomes very complex. So complexity of the SMPS is high as compared to the linear power supply. Then radio frequency interference not happen in the linear power supply because it is operated at 50 or 60 hertz, where radio frequency stealing is required in the case of SMPS because it is operated at very high frequency. So it may affect the nearby communication lines. If the frequency of the SMPS and nearby communication line frequency match, that will affect the communication. So radio frequency signaling is required in case of SMPS. So this is our disadvantage of SMPS. Second is the noise and electromagnetic interference. So there is no noise or electromagnetic interference created in the linear power supply because it is operated at just 50 years where noise and electromagnetic interference is quite significant because it's affected by the nearby communication. So for that we require the filter, electromagnetic interference filter is required in SMPS to avoid this type of noise. Application of linear power supply that, that we use in the audio frequency or radio frequency application because it is just operated at 50 hertz frequency, so there is no radio frequency interference. So in that case we can use the linear power supply. But you cannot use the SMPS for audio and radio frequency application. Because it is operated at the high frequency, so if the match both the frequency of SMP as well as radio or audio frequency, then it creates the noise in the cell. So generally, if the SMPS in the mobile phone charger, DC motor drives, as well as like you can see that in the mobile charger or sorry, personal laptop or computers, SMPS, and most of the all the electronic circuits, like in the space vehicle, also we use this type of power supplies. So these are the main differences between the linear and switch mode, switch mode power supply. So as we see that the advantages of SMPS is far away, uh, far more than the linear power supply. So generally we prefer to use this SMPS as compared to the linear power supply. So now let's discuss the detail about the general description of the power supply, then after advantage, disadvantage of SMPS, then block diagram of SMPS basic topology and practical requirement of SMPS. Then I classify the SMPS or different topology of the SMPS. Generally, we use the four different types of SMPS, flyback, full, full half bridge and full bridge type of the SMPS. And the application and then conclusion. So let's start with the general description of the power supply. So we can see that in this, uh, uh, this picture, there is a CPU of PC that we use the SMPS as a power supply. Yes. This one is a power supply, SMPS. So any device which supplies the electrical power to the electrical load that is called as a power supply. So as we know, there are two types of general power supplies available, DC power supply, AC power supply. So DC power supply you can apply by using this type of electronic circuit as well as by using the battery. And same way you can also apply the AC power supply. But generally in all the electronic circuit, we know that for the integrated circuit and digital circuit, we require the DC supply. So generally we use the DC SMPS. AC SMPS is also available, but 
in most of the applications we use the dc smb so in this chapter we just discuss about this dc smb which output is dc so as we discuss the linear electric power supply that also provide the power then switch mode power supply third one is the programmable power supply and fourth one is the ups uninterruptible uninterruptible power supply there are different types of power supply is available but in most of the application we use this switch mode power supply okay. so let's discuss the some of the advantages main advantages of smbs over the linear power supply so as you already discussed that weight of the smbs is low size is small efficiency is high power dissipation is less and it has a wide input voltage range means you can convert any input voltage ac into different dc voltage so wide range of voltage you have available in the smb this advantage of the smb is just that complexity of the circuit we require the more complex control circuits in the smb so overall we can see that the comparison the smbs is far better than the linear power supply now let's discuss that what are the factors you consider while you selecting the any topology of smbs for particular application so suppose that you have to design the or you have to choose the one of the smbs because there are different types of smbs available in the market so based on which parameter you select the smbs based on your requirement so there are five criteria based on that you can select your smbs so first question you ask yourself when you select any smbs that is the input to output dielectric isolation is required for any particular application if it is required then choose the smbs which provide the dielectric isolation you can here you can see the single line diagram we use a transformer so transformer function is what to just, just provide the isolation as well as step up or step down so if you require the dielectric isolation between input and output circuit you must use the transformer so select the topology of smbs which use the transformer for the isolation purpose here in this chapter we discuss the all this type of the smbs which uses the isolation it means that it uses the transformer okay yeah, but there are other type of the smbs also available but they do not use the transformer for the isolation purpose so just check that you require the isolation or not then based on that you select this smb second question ask that are you require the multiple output voltage because as you can see that like in the cpu in the center for the for the computer there are number of dc power supply is required you not require just single dc supply you require the 12 volt dc you require the 5 volt dc or you require the 18 volt dc also okay you require the different range of dc voltage or different number of dc voltage so based on that you select the smb you require the multiple output or not your smb is also available with the different multiple output voltage range may be available for the three output dc voltage or maybe a one output dc voltage it means it gives a one dc output voltage or it may give the three or four dc output voltage so depending upon the requirement you use this smbs or you select the smbs third question ask that does the prospective topology plays a reasonable voltage stretch across the semiconductor switch it means that here you use the rectifier as well as the inverter so in that converter your switch it may be a mosfet or maybe a power bjd that can be capable to handle this much of voltage stress based on your application so that type of switch is available in your smbs so that you first decide there are the same way does the prospective topology topology means the different types like this five five type two spool half bridge and full bridge in all these different types of smbs the voltage across the semiconductor switch is different based on this construction or topology so based on this topology your switch is capable to handle the voltage reading or current reading that you first select so based on that you select the smb and then fifth one is how much of input voltage is placed across the primary transformer winding or inductor so based on all these five parameter you choose the your required smbs and last one is that how much of power 
output voltage rating is how much power rating is required in the load side. So the different topology of SMPS has different power rating. Like flyback SMPS can operate up to 200 volt. Push pull SMPS work 500 volt. Half bridge operated up to 100 volt. That full bridge SMPS or can be operated at more than 1000 volt. So depending upon the power requirement at the DC side, you can select the end type of this topology of the SMPS. Clear? So all of you understand up to this point. So then after we discuss this, start this topology of SMPS. Is there any doubt when you up to this point? Yes or no? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. Now, if we first start the first topology that is a flyback converter or you can call as a flyback SMPS. It can be operated up to 200 watt. Now you can see this topology of this of circuit diagram of the flyback converter. As we see in the single line diagram, same thing happened in this all these converters, all this SMPS, flyback to spool, half bridge as well as full bridge. So you can see here in the circuit diagram, we first have AC supply which is normal 50 years AC. Convert into DC by using the uncontrolled rectifier. It means by diode based rectifier, you first convert AC to DC. And this DC voltage is applied to the inverter. Here, inverter is connected to the transformer itself. You can see that the primary side of the transformer is series will connect the switch M1. This M1 switch is nothing but a power MOSFET. So, this MOSFET single switch just like a operated as an inverter converts your DC to high frequency AC. So here, this DC of the uncontrolled rectifier is chopped by this power MOSFET at a very high frequency in terms of 100 kilohertz to 1000 kilohertz, so which convert this DC into high frequency AC. So this transformer is not a normal transformer, it is a ferret core transformer because here the input of this DC is converted into high frequency AC by using this high frequency operated switch. So this high frequency AC by using this transformer is transferred to the secondary side. So that function is to isolate your load from the source as well as to step up or step down your AC voltage. And then at the output side, here we use the diode based rectifier. So this diode is converted this high frequency AC which you get at the secondary side of the transformer to the DC. And then after you can see that the capacitor is provided which acts as a filter circuit. So the output of this rectifier is filtered out by this capacitor. Capacitor is connected across the load. So whatever the voltage you get across this capacitor, same you get across the load. So after the filter out of this DC voltage, the DC voltage comes across the load side. It means you get the control DC voltage without harmonics at the load side. So this is the simple function of this flyback converter. So what actually happened in the flyback converter, let's understand one by one. When your thyristor switch, uh, sorry, when your power MOSFET is on, what happened at the load side? And when your power MOSFET is off, what happened at the load side voltage? So let's first understand that first mode where your switch is in on condition. So mode 1 operation M1 is on, it means switch is in on condition. So here you get the DC supply by using the controlled and uncontrolled rectifier. You can see that this is a VS voltage, DC voltage. So this DC voltage applied to the switch. So what will happen? The voltage come across this primary with this polarity. Here dot convention is given. So with this dot convention, positive polarity at the upper terminal and negative, uh, negative polarity at the lower terminal. And secondary side dot convention is given at the lower side. So it means that you get the positive at the lower terminal and negative at the upper terminal. Yeah. So during the on condition of this amp switch, you just at a closed switch or short circuit, positive voltage with this polarity come at the primary and voltage at the secondary side with this polarity come at the secondary side. So as you know that this negative terminal is connected with the anode of the diode. You can see in the circuit diagram, this negative is connected with the diode. So your diode will be in the reverse bias, it means it is in the open circuit condition. So you can see that here diode is represented by the open circuit. 
now what will happen in this case on condition of the switch you cannot able to transfer this power from supply to the load side but at this time here we assume that this capacitor is already charged with the voltage same amount of the voltage we require at the load side so when your switch is in on condition your secondary power is not transferred to the load side but at this time your capacitor is already charged with the same as the load voltage so this capacitor provide the constant voltage to the load now after in the second mode when your switch is in off condition at this time what will happen let's see this so during the on condition what will happen this inductor of this transformer store the energy now during the off condition what will happen this transformer primary voltage induced which changes polarity so upper terminal become negative and lower terminal become positive same way at the secondary side also the polarity will change upper terminal become positive and lower terminal becomes negative so whatever the energy stored in the inductor during on condition of the switch in the transformer winding this energy is released during the off condition of the switch when m1 is off so you can see that polarity of the induced voltage is changed here primary and secondary side so secondary side positive terminal is connected with the anode of the diode so now diode is act as a closed switch so it is represented by the closed switch here so in this case off condition of the m1 switch whatever the energy is stored by this inductor in this mode that is released in the second mode when switch is m1 is off condition and this energy is provided to the load side so you can see that now current is flowing from this diode so this secondary current is charge your capacitor as well as part of the current is provided to the load so you can see that one current i0 that is flow from this load and one current of this id that is charge your capacitor up to this load voltage capacitor clear okay. so here it means that in off condition your secondary side provide the power to the load but in on condition your circuit becomes off in this case so let's understand by the waveform so you can get clearly idea about it so first this is the waveform of primary side voltage of the transformer this side when switch is in on condition first move so as you can see that v1 voltage is equal to what same as the supply voltage vs and you can see that here the vs voltage come across the primary side this v1 is the primary voltage primary winding voltage v2 is the secondary winding voltage in is the magnetizing current flowing into the transformer and id that is the current flowing into this diode so first half time when you switch in on conditions primary side voltage is vs and in the supply at that time voltage across the secondary side that is what supply into transformation ratio n2 by n okay so this is a v2 secondary side voltage but with this polarity of the voltage here this is positive voltage but as per the dot combination you can see that negative at the upper terminal positive at the lower in that case the diode is at the open circuit so there is no current is flowing into the diode it means diode current is zero so you can see that during the positive cycle here your diode current id is zero during on period of this switch at this time you can see that magnetizing current in the transformer that is increases linearly here we assume that the transformer magnetizing current cannot be become zero after the completion of one cycle one cycle means t on plus t off so in one cycle your magnetizing current not complete discharge so you can see that at the starting of this cycle the magnetizing current is start from some positive value it means that in the previous cycle the transformer is energized so that this at that time has this value and then after when m1 is on current is flowing in the transformer winding here the magnetizing current will increases gradually your transformer winding is what just like inductor so current is increases gradually you can see and why only magnetizing current is flowing because you can see that diode is in off condition it means your load is not connected with the secondary 
so it is a no load condition so in no load condition you know that only low load current which is nothing but a magnetizing current can only flow through the transformer winding so because of this reason this is a magnetizing current or you can say the transformer current increases linearly in this on period of the switch candle and off period when it starts from this point means that m1 is off second mode what will happen polarity of the induced voltage is changed both the side primary and secondary side so you can see that primary side voltage become negative secondary side voltage also becomes negative and now your magnetizing current is decreases it means whatever energy stored in on condition that is released in the off time of the switch so here you can see that magnetizing current is decreases so in the second mode you can see that the diode is coming to conduction so here whatever the magnetizing current is flowing through the transformer same current is flowing through this diode as a diode current so this diode current and magnetizing current you can see that same value here so whatever the magnetizing current same wave shape of the diode current here. so magnetizing current is decreasing so diode current is also decreasing here. and at the completion of the off time of the m1 switch here you can see that magnetizing current not become completely zero so diode current is also not become zero here that has some value because the magnetizing current not get the sufficient turn off time to completely discharge because after that again on time will start switch one is m1 is closed so again your transformer winding is energized it means magnetizing current is increases again same procedure is repeated for the next time. now you can see that diode current also becomes zero in the on time again it is increasing in the off time and decreasing because same linear nature as compared as, as as like a magnetizing current of the transformer so this is a very shape of primary winding or primary winding voltage secondary winding voltage magnetizing current of transformer and this is the diode current so this happens at a very high frequency so this frequency is depend upon the switching frequency of this switch power mosfet for whatever switch you can use you can use the power mosfet or you can use the power bgp also that depending upon your requirement but as you know the limitation if you use the power bgp then bgp has a limitation to operate the frequency operating the switch at a particular frequency up to the 40 kilohertz or 50 kilohertz where the operating frequency the mosfet is very high and as you know that as you increase the frequency operating frequency of the switch the overall size of the filter like this capacitor and inductor becomes less so overall size of this power supply becomes less so generally we prefer to use the power mosfet in the smps to reduce the overall size of the power supply so i hope all of you have understand the working of this first smps called as a flyback converter or flyback smps is there any doubt to anyone in this smps no sir, no sir okay now second one is the push pull type of converter or you can call as a push pull uh, push pull type of smps same concept is here just here we require the two switches or two mosfet and we require the transformer with the center tap in both the side primary as well as secondary side so again here 230 volt should be as ac converted to dc by using the uncontrolled rectifier so here you get the dc and this dc voltage is applied to this inverter which is made by this switch m1 and m2 which convert this dc into high frequency ac and then this high frequency ac transfer to the secondary side here we use the d1 and d2 which act as a rectifier the rectifier high frequency ac into dc but dc that contains the high frequency frequency dc so this filter out by using this lnc filter so at the output of filter you get the pure dc at close the low side and this is a closed loop control system so you can see that we take the feedback from the load side here so based on the requirement of the load voltage here you, you can control the switch m1 and m2 by using this control circuit okay yeah. so again we understand this operation of this push pull converter by in two mode first mode switch m1 is on and then after second mode switch m2 is on at a time only one switch is on m1 or m2 
so first mode we turn on the m1 switch so let's see the single line diagram or uh, recalling circuit what happen here dc supply is here positive terminal is connected here negative is here so what is the polarity at the primary and secondary with this polarity plus minus and upper primary upper half of the primary is plus and minus secondary side also same way polarity plus minus plus minus here if we turn on the only switch m1 and turn off the switch m2 so current is flowing from the dc supply to second half of the primary winding it means in this winding it cannot be flow into this winding because this winding is connected in series with the switch m2 and series switch m2 is in off condition it means open circuit so current cannot be flow into this open circuit path it flow only in the closed path so current from the supply from this vs positive go into this second half of the primary then switch m1 is closed and then negative terminal of the dc so like this way current is flowing when switch m1 is in on condition so same polarity of the voltage transfer to the secondary side plus minus and plus minus now with this polarity you can see that only diode d1 coming to forward bias where d2 it is reverse bias because d2 is connected with the negative anode is connected with the negative here d1 is connected with the positive anode so d1 coming to forward bias d2 in reverse bias so it means that the, this v2 voltage is rectified which is the high frequency ac by using this diode d1 rectifier and then after this rectified dc applied to this lnc filter and then after it gives to the your dc load and based on the requirement of the load voltage this feedback control system controls this switch m1 and m1 turn on and turn off okay. now at the same way in the second mode where m2 is in on condition m1 is off what will happen supply voltage is given again same polarity of the voltage both the half of the primary but in this case m1 is in off condition so current is flowing into the upper primary winding it means upper half of this primary in this case so current is flowing from supply to this primary winding switch m2 is closed in this way okay. so the same polarity of the voltage in this here same polarity of the voltage is used it is a different voltage here it is a positive okay lower side of this primary winding positive so upper terminal is become negative same way here this terminal is become positive and this terminal become negative same polarity is transferred at the secondary side so upper terminal is negative positive negative and positive so in this case your diode d2 coming to forward bias d1 in reverse bias so now current is flowing from this secondary winding here positive here negative so this high frequency ac is converted to dc by using this d2 diode which is acted as a rectifier and current is flowing from d2 lnc filter load and then this is negative of this secondary winding again repeat secondary side or sorry primary side polarity is changed minus plus minus plus again polarity change in the secondary side minus plus minus plus in this case d1 reverse bias d2 forward bias so this positive of this terminal current is flowing through d2 lc filter filter out the harmonics load and then negative clear yeah. so this is the way your push uh, pull converter is operating now what is the difference here in the case of push pull converter as compared with the previous flyback converter here if you see that in the each switch when it is in off condition the voltage come across the switch is two times supply voltage here supply voltage is vs so when m1 switch is in on condition in first mode m2 is in off condition at this time the voltage come across the switch m2 is two times supply voltage let's understand how it is two times so as you know that when m1 is on the polarity of the voltage across the both the primary is with this polarity plus minus plus minus clear yeah. so m2 is in off condition it means it is open circuited now this plus terminal it means it is a plus vs at this side is the drain terminal of mosfet 
plus V S come at this side. M M one is in on condition. This terminal is minus, so it is minus V S. M one is on, so this minus M uh, minus V S polarity will come at this source side of this M two terminal. Here plus V S, here is minus V S. The so voltage difference across this which is V S minus minus V S. It is two times V S. It means voltage. Across the switch M2 is two times supply voltage. It means whenever any switch is in off condition, voltage stress across the switch is two times supply voltage. So the drawback of this push-pull converter is that this type of circuit is generally used for only the low voltage application. Because if we use this push-pull converter for the high voltage application, your BS is very high. So in that case, you require the switch. Or power MOSFET, which is operated at a very high voltage, because that must be withstand two times your supply voltage. Clear? Yeah. So as you know that as the voltage rating of the any semiconductor device increases, the cost of the device will increase. Yeah. So that's why generally we prefer to use this type of the converter for the low voltage application only. So that is the main difference between push-pull converter and this previous plug-in converter. In this converter only supply voltage is coming from the switch when it is in off condition. Yeah. So switch M1 must be designed based on the supply voltage rating. Where here it is designed based on the two times supply voltage rating because it must withstand the two times supply voltage. Otherwise it will damage. If you design this switch M1 and M2 for the same supply voltage VS, but voltage coming from the switch during off condition is two times supply voltage. So what will happen? Your semiconductor switch becomes damaged or destroyed. Yeah. So this is the drawback of this push-pull converter. Understand all of you? The second SMBS is there any doubt to anyone? No sir. No, no. Okay. So next two SMBS, half bridge and full bridge, we we'll discuss during the lab session today at 1 p.m. And then after we will see the simulation of this half bridge and full bridge SMBS also. So you can get the clear idea about. How your SMPS is works if you see the simulation. Clear? Yeah. So here I stop this lecture. If you are in doubt, ask the question. Otherwise, here we stop this lecture.